Welcome back to Skidmore Family Farm. Today's video, we're just going to do a quick little update, show you the chickens. Our pumpkin uh, broke off the vine, so. Ashley murdered it. Yeah, Ashley murdered it, she said. Uh, so we picked that and we've got that in here, but I'll take you out front. You can see our zinnias, how much they've uh, grown. This cooler weather has allowed them to flower out a lot more and they're actually um, splitting up a little bit they're growing multiple plants that weren't even there to start with so we'll go check that out and here's Rosie being, peppers? Rosie being nosy yeah I'll get that when I go out front okay, we'll show you the peppers too your peppers are looking good. yeah and I picked one of my peppers last night or actually I hit it with the lawnmower and knocked it over or knocked one of the peppers off and uh, I put that on my hamburger last night. I grilled it with the hamburgers. Want to come out, Rose? Come on. But you can see right here, look at how much these zinnias have split up and sprouted up. And this was just one plant to start with I put like four of them across here and you can see this one on the corner here has really taken off I think it gets more rain than the others is what it is more water but we have our peppers here it's one of them these back here are the ancho peppers. That one's doing really good. I think this was a green pepper, bell pepper, whatever you want to call it. But you can see down here the bell peppers down here. These were all the all the purple ones. They taste just like the. The normal bell peppers, your green or your reds, they all taste the same, even though they're different colors. We got quite a few of those. And then we have the wildflowers that we planted. If you go back in our videos, you can see our um, basement grow room and most of the flowering ones have already flowered. I think they're just about done for the year and then this pepper plant down here has got I think two or three peppers on it yeah that's got two on it that one's a nice one didn't have any scarring or bug damage or anything on it and then this little one over here I thought was dead, but I, th I think I got it with the weed eater earlier in the season, but it came back. I babied it and let the grass grow up around it. I didn't weed eat too much to, to make sure I didn't hit it again. And then we got some lambs here that just grew out in the middle of the yard for no reason. <laughs> As you can see, it's just out in the center of the yard. The closest lamb's ear that I know we have is over there by the tree. That's like 30 feet away. But I've got the chickens out back. And we'll go check the chickens out. They're all doing good. They've slowed down on laying. They're kind of, I think, in between molting. Some of them have been losing feathers and some of them haven't yet. But our egg production's dropped way down. But we're still getting eggs. Still get enough to sell and still get enough to eat, so. I cut the grass yesterday and I threw all the clippings inside their chicken run and they ate that in one day's time. And they were squawking and making all kinds of racket earlier, so I let them out.
but you can see the uh, barred rock right here her back end is really fluffy like they are when they're when they're babies when they're little chicks when they're just like furry almost and no feathers that's a sign that it was uh, molting that's the new feather growth coming in Mm -hmm. and then some of the reds are too like this one here you can see she's real fluffy on the back end where it was where it's normally feathers i mean their back ends are usually a little softer and fluffier anyhow but they're really you can just see that they're new feather growth that might be for molting so I said they get they get bald spots. Half pints coming back now. We've already got four eggs. Yeah. Well, that's good because we got six yesterday, and they had been the four I had gotten a couple days in a row were like after two o'clock. Yeah, they were real late in the day yesterday. We had one at like six o'clock, and the black sex link was still sitting on it, and it was warm. But egg production's kind of been back and forth, like I said, but they're picking back up again, I think. Like I said, I think a lot of it's just molting. A lot of them I've been finding a lot more feathers than normal. You always have some feathers in the chicken run or in their tractor, but we've had probably double or triple what we normally have as far as just random feathers laying around. And like this red here, you can see she has bald spot I don't know if you can see that right around her vent which they normally don't have I mean they do a little bit but that's pretty pretty bad well it's not bad but it might have been Yep. Come over and peck me. I'm a pecker. Come on. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> Hi, Hi. And we've also we give them vitamins. Uh, we take infant liquid vitamins when they get sick, uh, or if their combs just like shrivel up, like right now. You can see her comb is really tall and uh, looks pretty good. Uh, got lots of color. She just they'll get really, uh, yeah, know. they'll get really uh, like ashy looking, like really dry skin on their combs. It's so rough, isn't it? I know. And that's went away. That that summer heat got them for a little bit, and they were getting a little bit uh, rough looking, and then molting and all that. Okay. But they've all got really good colors on their wattles. Like this one right here, still, these two right here are a little whitish. But when you see them in person, they kind of have like, it looks like dry skin on it. Um, and a lot of that's from molting. Like I said, they start putting all their energy into new feather growth to keep warm for the winter. So we add the liquid vitamins to their water just a little bit at a time. And then if we get any sick ones, we always do that too. Last year we had one that I'm not sure what happened, but she, one of the reds just had an issue and we brought her inside because it was winter time. We put her in the dog crate. Cause Ashley whined about it. So Sean helps baby. Help me baby her and get her back but, to But yeah, Ashley was working a lot of hours at that time and I brought her inside and um, within a week's time uh, she got better and the weather broke because we had a really cold spell and that's when she got sick. And we had a day where it got back up into like the high 40s, low 50s in the middle of winter. So that's when we, 
<laughs> we reintroduced her back outside and then she was she's been fine ever since still laying still good production up until like i said this last week or so or the last month when we had all that heat wave and now they're molting the weather's changing we're getting some cool days and cool evenings it's gonna get back to being hot though yeah it's supposed to it's gonna go back and forth from I know, for the next month or so unfortunately yeah but the cooler evenings help too yeah. It's one thing for it to be hot during the day or sunny days, Four, but five, six, seven, eight, when it's nine. hot all day, all night, for days on end, their production goes down. It's just kind of miserable for them, I think. Rosie's still out front. Probably. But that wraps up another Skidmore Family Farm video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up to like our videos and hit the notification bell bell not bill to get all our latest videos and you can see right before we end this our lovely chickens got in my tire and they decided to destroy my dandelions they weren't dandelions oh, no, they were, they, sorry they're marigolds marigolds yeah they thought it would be fun to do that they even knocked some out but oh well we didn't really have any money invested in those besides 99 cents for seeds <laughs> But they've left most of the flowers alone all all summer long. They get in the beds and like to dig, but that's the first plant that they've really kind of torn up. Well, that's their area that they were Yeah, to... Yeah, this area over here, there was a, a barn uh, slash like clubhouse thing that was all dilapidated. We tore it down. They helped us uncover it. And they've continued to dig through here. There was lots of rotten wood, so there was probably like termites or little bugs that they constantly dug through and they've actually cleaned it up for us and unearthed all the trash that was there so we could pick it up tomatoes and oh yeah we still got some peppers and tomatoes back here i forgot the tomatoes are sorry i ended the video too short so but you can see all our um, hostas are got burned up i mean even when we were watering them it didn't wasn't enough the leaves were getting fried and this one was doing really poor, and now it's coming back to life. So it's just kind of hit and miss. These were really brown and dead almost when I planted them in this. I transferred them in there, and now they're doing good. So one got killed. The other one over there that I just showed you, the chickens dug up, was doing really good. And then they got a hold of it and messed it up. But we still got some cherry tomatoes that one's starting to split we're going to eat it that's yummy mm. yeah really good flavor i got a few little peppers back here we never transplanted these into the ground or anything they're still in the little red solo cups but we got peppers on them and It's a really good first year though for starting everything in the basement grow room and not really knowing anything about gardening. Um, I think if we would have planted all these in the ground we would have done really good. I mean our peppers took right off and we're still, I mean these are, we've eaten dozens of these little cherry tomatoes throughout the past month or so. But, like I said, that's going to wrap up our video. Thanks for watching.